title of this video is journal competition. Now, journals are privately owned companies and there's mega journals and there's little journals. There's good journals and there's bad journals. They come in lots of different flavors, but they're all competing in a marketplace for prestige, for money. It's a really interesting and really powerful business. And you may be surprised at how profit profitable journals are. Let's talk about journals. When you're at the end of your career and you're already successful and you've got a very high H index, it doesn't really matter where you publish. Your work can go wherever you want to put it because you have nothing left to prove. But when you're starting your career, it's actually really crucial to publish in the best journal that you can because when you're going for, for jobs, you're competing with other engineers, with other engineering academics, and if their H index is bigger than yours, well, they're more likely to get the job because that's how it works. The bigger the H index, the better they are. The more publications, the more intellectual chops they have. So let's talk about journals. As I said to you in a previous video, when you reference papers, I want you to look at where you found the reference and look at the impact factor for that journal. So again, the journal for this particular reference is Nature, and you can see that its impact factor in 2018 was 43.1. Let's have a look at how you find that. I think I'll just slip, skip this slide and go on to the next one. The journal impact factor is calculated by looking at a window of two years. So in 2015, it looks at the number of papers in the journal and the number of citations. And this one is divided. So 25 papers in 2013 and 20 papers in 2014 give you 45, with a total of 500 citations taken the year after, in 2015, you then calculate the impact factor, a bit over 11. That's how it's calculated. Is a two-year window too big? Is a two-year window too small? That can have issues. I'll explain some, some funny things that can happen with that in a second, but that's what the impact factor of a journal is all about. Looking at the previous two years, what is the relationship of the publications in one year to the two years before that? Let's have a look at some of the greatest impact factors in journals. Well, Nature, as I've mentioned, kind of dominates uh, in the top 10. You'll see there's quite a few reviews. You've already got a bit of a sense of some of the disciplines that are starring in the H index. There's a relationship there to the impact factor in journals and the medical journals really dominate and that isn't likely to change. Over time, you can see that the average impact factor has risen and it's going to continue to rise of a, of a particular paper, of a particular journal. You know, there, there's, there's a correlation of, of, of age, both with H index, but also uh, with, with impact factor in journals as, as the competition becomes more and more intense. The prestige is related to which journal you publish in. The more pressure there is for the journal to ensure that its impact factor remains high. Let's look at some disciplinary bias again. You can see that clinical medicine is way off the charts in terms of, in terms of impact factor for journals. Engineering and technology is respectable, but you can see again that the medical fields are, are dominating chemistry. It's the, the same kind of thing. There's a lot of interest, a lot of energy, a lot of money that goes into those fields, that's where the publications are. Now, the impact factor, because it calculates on a two-year basis, as in it looks at the last two years, counts the, the number of articles, counts the number of citations, it can have amusing effects. There was a very famous instance of a, of a journal, Acta Crystallographa, Section A, where somebody wrote a piece of software called ShellX and they then wrote a paper and in the abstract of that paper they say if you use ShellX you need to refer to ShellX. Now everybody in the field happened to use ShellX and so after that paper was written 
in the following two years, basically every paper that was written in that field referred back to that paper. And so suddenly the citations went absolutely through the roof and authors for that for that journal who were used to ticking along with an impact factor of the journal being, being around two were suddenly able to put on their CVs that they were now publishing in a journal that had, a, had an impact factor greater than 45. So it's spike sensitive. Like I said, metrics sometimes have issues. That was a fairly harmless one, a blip, uh, and, and an amusing one. Now there are other metrics in addition to impact factor for journals. Feel free to, to look into some of those in, in more detail. But they all have their pros and, and cons.